few comments about the trade, then I'll get to Garrett Crochet and then throw it out for questions. Uh, we're, we're thrilled to add uh, a player of A.J. Pollock's caliber to this roster. Uh, we view him as making us better offensively as well as defensively and providing us with some uh, important flexibility as we go through this season as, as well as some depth for whatever valleys may lie ahead for us. Uh, obviously, uh, quality professional hitter. We all know what he's capable of doing defensively. Uh, We've already had a handful of conversations with Tony and with the coaches about how we're going to mix them in uh, as long as well as continue to obviously get uh, Aloy and Luis Robert and uh, Sheets and Bond their opportunities as well. So excited by the addition, thinks it makes us better and uh, sad to see Craig go but know that he's got uh, a great opportunity for him with a, with a very, very good Dodger team. and. Uh, uh, very likely in a role that he's obviously excelled in for the vast majority of his career. For any questions on crochet, uh, the preliminary MRI reading is not great. Uh, there uh, appears to be some damage to the ligament, uh, which very likely will require uh, Tommy John surgery. That said, this is again preliminary and he is going to seek out a uh, second opinion here in the coming days. Uh, but being above board with everything uh, along these lines, the prognosis at this time is, is not great. Uh, if you want to take the glass half full side of things, uh, at least from a timing standpoint with regards to uh, any Tommy John surgery, uh, using the very generic approximate uh, 11 to 13 month recovery for a reliever, uh, we should have him back for the 2023 season, if that is the case. Questions? You talked about the fit with Pollock. Um, yeah. How does that, especially with Tony having talked about not overusing Yasmani early on and wanting to keep his bat in the lineup at the age, so how does that work with the younger guys, too, then, like Vaughn, when he's healthy and sheets and that sort of thing? I mean, I, I, if we are blessed with perfect health throughout this season, that will be fantastic because it will be we'll be in a position where arguably we have too many players deserving of at bats on a championship caliber club. Uh, I, I look forward to embracing that potential issue. Uh, if in reality we have the occasional setback or a guy needs to be uh, put in the DH spot to rest his legs or give him a, a couple of days to recover from the grind of the season, you know, we have the flexibility positionally that guys can move around the diamond and, and uh, confident that Tony and his staff will put him in the best position to succeed. Is this as much about, I mean, obviously it helps you in right, but as much about overall roster depth, building kind of a it's, championship it's, depth roster? It's very much about roster depth. Obviously, uh, you know, AJ has the ability to help us in right field, we believe, uh, but, you know, he's made his career in left and center as well. So it gives us some depth, some alternative options, some ability to take guys off their feet, as well as uh, solidify us, again, both offensively and defensively. I know on, on paper, uh, when you enter this offseason, you talk about potential fits in the outfield. People probably tend to gravitate more towards left-handed hitters, given the way our lineup is, is constructed. Uh, obviously, AJ has been a, a fantastic hitter over the course of his career against both lefties and righties. Uh, I believe putting up a OPS over 9,900 last year against righties and over 800 for his career. So, uh, although not left-handed, we think he makes the lineup tougher against both lefties and righties. Probably yes, making, James. I, I just want to talk about your name for a bit. Uh, probably when you're making the steal, you were you know anticipating losing one reliever, not two. Yeah. Does this change yeah. your outlook or your feeling of need with the bullpen? Uh, look, the, obviously the timing's not great. You know, we're on the phone with Andrew last night in the midst of our game while also getting text messages from James Cruck dealing with Garrett. So, not great timing on on that, but uh, we do think we have. Uh, quality bullpen options in-house to, to fill those innings. Um, Ryan Burr and Matt Foster both look real good this spring. We've been impressed with what uh, Crick has brought to the table and both of the young lefties and Souza and Severino have shown uh, the potential ability to help a, a big league club. Uh, so we're, we, we've got options. We obviously have Joe Kelly coming back at some point as well, which will help uh, uh, deepen the, the back end of our pen and the options there. So you never, there's never a 
a good time to lose any uh, pitching depth, regardless of how well situated you are, but we feel we've, we've got quality options to fill those voids. I can anticipate this question is probably way too early, but excellent. this season was about Garrett kind of moving up a little bit and mm -hmm. building an innings pace. Does this kind of yeah, restart let's, it? Let's, yeah. Too soon. <laughs> Too soon. Uh, look, he's, he's... It's a natural point of curiosity. Uh, it's a natural... Uh, it certainly would be difficult for me to have a, a positive spin on him missing the season in terms of his development. Uh, the only real positive, again, is, is the timing puts him in line to, again, be able to help us in 2023. As for what role and the recovery path and the development path, we'll take a bit here, let the kid... Uh, recover from whatever lies ahead, and then we'll, we'll chart a path forward. He just felt it on that one pitch, though, is that when it... Uh, in talking to him, it sounds like the pitch before he felt a little something, but it sort of went away, so then he threw the next pitch and felt a sharp pain again, and obviously wisely shut it down at that point. How important is it to have two left-handers in it? Uh, again, similar to the Pollock acquisition, it's more about the ability to get lefties and righties out than just necessarily match up uh, left on left. Uh, you've, we've seen throughout the league, we've seen teams successful with one and at times even zero left-handed relievers in their pen because of the effectiveness of their righties against opposite-handed hitters. Uh, I suspect we'll, we're still putting the, on the final touches on the roster. I suspect we'll break with at least two lefties as part of our pen, obviously Aaron and, and uh, very likely at least one of the kids to start. There's going to be, look, we every team in baseball is going to have a lot of pitching moves over the course of the summer, we suspect. So uh, the, there's always, understandably, a lot of focus on who are the 28 in this instance breaking with you on opening day. In reality, we look at it as sort of a, a, a much larger universe than the 13 to 15 pitchers that we break with on opening day and instead know that there's going to be some combination of 20 some odd pitchers who over the course of the summer are going to contribute and we feel we feel pretty good as we sit here today about the the depth and the options we have and you're able to avoid uh, arbitration with uh, lucas yeah how about that <laughs> almost like when i told you don't worry about it so much that i knew a little something uh any event yeah we were able to avoid arbitration with lucas which is great uh, uh had good honest conversations face to face with lucas uh Jeremy Haber as well did, and, and frankly, and perhaps most interestingly, so did Jerry Reinsdorf. Uh, he and Lucas met one-on-one -on -one and had a nice conversation about uh, how negotiations sometimes get a little bogged down and tried to search for solutions out of it. And we're obviously happy that we were able to and have everyone's focus properly uh, on the season ahead and not worried about preparing for some sort of in-season hearing. The uh, Vaughn news, as Tony said yesterday, was better than. Yeah. For, I mean, he's progressing. He's progressing, well. he's yeah. progressing nicely. Now, again, the, I think the uh, biggest enemy, so to speak, for Andrew right now is probably time right. in terms of the amount of time we have left to get ready for the season and make sure, not only first and foremost, that he's physically in the best condition he can be, but also uh, from a timing standpoint, that he's in the best position to, you know, face big league pitchers. So that's, that's really what we're dealing with here more now in terms of uh, confirming that he's physically full go and then uh, dealing with the timing issue and whatever amount of time we have left here in Arizona before we have to set the roster. The mantra this spring has been pretty much every time, every recovery, one more move, maybe there's only one more move to make. Do you feel like you're in pretty good shape right now if there is no more move? Uh, Not one more if, move. If, if, <laughs> <laughs> really making Michigan look bad. <laughs> uh, in, <laughs> There's always one more move to make. There's always one more move to make. We are having a lot of conversations, but quite frankly, the focus of Tony and the coaches and the players is appropriately on the guys in that room. And if in the end our opening day 28 come from that group that's currently here on campus, uh, that works for us and we're, we're excited to get going. Back to Pollock, um, he seems to fit a lot of your other moves you've made this offseason, veteran, playoff experience, uh, what do you like about him and his fit with this team? Other than all the things I said earlier, uh, <laughs> we do the, the playoff experience, the having 
obviously been to the promised land and performed well on the biggest stage we think is a positive very positive clubhouse presence not dissimilar from a guy like josh harrison or, or uh, joe kelly uh, kendall graveman all veterans uh, who have been through the been through the wars and succeeded on the biggest stage which we think fits in nicely with a young team that are a, play, a team with a lot of young core players that are continuing to grow through uh, ideally all the way through October. Collins uh, sent out what does this yeah. mean for, for him? Uh, it means he's going to play regularly in Charlotte instead of being on the bench in Chicago to start the year. Again we went through we had what four different guys catch games for us last year including Yerms inning or two. Uh, you can, we're going to need depth at that position, and we still view uh, Zach as having upside and a guy who could potentially help us over the course of the summer. At this point, we think everyone's better served by him playing regularly down in Charlotte instead of a few times a week here in Chicago. Typically, you know, there's always one more move to make, but a lot yeah. of times when you open spring, you talk about how the offseason kind of passed and you know, you're focused on the guys in camp. Have you reached that point at all, or is it still no. kind of, you no. know, now this, this look this whole right this whole obviously for understandable reasons this whole offseason has been a little jacked up and you know the abbreviated spring the lack of contact with the players for several months over the course of the offseason has sort of led to this spring training being a little messed up too in terms of what we're rhythm and what we're used to doing uh, the the offseason for me or in my opinion ends opening day and then obviously there's probably going to be fewer transactions over the early part of the season and before you know it the opportunity to improve ourselves in june and july will present itself but from my from my standpoint or the mentality of everyone in the in the front office the off season's still going at this point did you kind of when you were looking out for possible outfield additions were you just thinking in terms of someone who handles right-handed pitching obviously that tends to lean towards lefties a lot, right. but was it just that goal of guys who could face righties and do damage? It's, that's part of it, but the, the flexibility, the defense, the clubhouse presence, those are all considerations. Obviously, there's economic sides to this thing, these things, too. Uh, and we really like what AJ brings in all of those categories. I mean, uh, this is the lesson of last year kind of being you don't really have to worry about Andrew Vaughn being blocked or Kevin Sheets being blocked because you know those opportunities obviously come up over the course of the season. Yeah, those, those opportunities are going to come up over the course of the season. And again, if we have for the first time in a few years ahead of us a, a full slate, like we know that's what we're going to be dealing with. We're not going to have seven inning double headers. We're not going to have a shortened schedule. Knock on wood. Um, and we know getting guys adequate rest and recovery is going to be important to us reaching our ultimate goals at the end of the season and ideally through the fall. So again, having the depth and the quality options anywhere we can on the roster we think is going to, going to serve us well.